Hello and welcome to the 10th episode of Kerbal Space Endeavor. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you guys for all of the support. Um, we just launched a new vessel here. We are going to Minmus since we've previously been to the moon. Now it is time for a Man Minmus mission. And this time we have Barston, Dunvin and Kendrin Kerman as our crew on board. And um, yeah, this mission goes a lot better since I was smart enough to pack enough fuel this time. So we have the same procedure as the last time where we have a drive section and we have... And with a little bit of wobbling here and there, we do make it into an orbit and somehow I did a little bit of a miscalculation. I thought I could bring all four tanks with me to Minmus. But I couldn't, so what I did was I had to ditch two of these parts that I should probably ditched earlier if I set up my um, fuel lines better. But I guess we'll have two fuel tanks floating in space and being there as space debris. I think I'm gonna go pick those up and return them back to the planet Kerbin so we don't ever have the probability of them crashing into things. So there we were just collecting some science that we missed in previous times. Thanks to the science alert I am now notified when I get a new science alert. So yeah we just set ourselves up to have an encounter with Minmus and with a little bit of an adjustment and getting first of all into the right orbit and then it's just straightforward accelerating. So what happened was I used up all of the fuel in the extra tanks on the side but I didn't want to leave them in orbit as well so what I thought is I'm just gonna take the extra weight with me because I have enough fuel and once I have an encounter with Minmus I'm gonna plot a course to make uh, me crash into the planet and what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to ditch these two extra fuel cells that I have on the side and just let them crash into the planet so we don't have less space debris around Kerbin. So here you see me doing just that setting up a maneuver so I have uh, no parry apps when I reach Minmus, pretty much indicating that I will crash into the planet. And um, yeah, there we go. It's always just some fine tuning that we have to do. And now we're in the stage of decoupling and throwing them into this unstable orbit and which will crash them. However, it is also time for me to do some new science, and I think for that we will jump back to unedited me. Okay, now we are here over Minmus, and we can do our first crew report. You note that your radio fails to transmit when set to the off position. Very acute observation. Let's do an EVA report. It looks so small and yet so delicious. And we get back in. What else can we have in store here? Gravity scan. Sadly, the readings indicate that Minmus is far too dense to be composed of mint ice cream. What does the magnetometer tell us? <sighs> Frozen ice cream doesn't emit a magnetic field, dummy. All right, material study. The samples react to the lack of an atmosphere. Actually, we're not gonna do the material study and the mystery goo because I want them for the surface. Minty gelatinous sweet must get closer. All right. Now that we have all of that scientific data, it is time to adjust our orbit so we will not crash into the planet and die. And there we go, already 8,000 meters. Let's put ourselves there, 10,000. Nice and neat, it takes us 1.7 meters per second to change our trajectory in 25 seconds. 
and after that interlude from my previous me we go time accelerated forward where we just collect all of the data that we had and transfer it over to the drive section of the ship and of course we do recollect some signs just to make sure that we have ga gathered everything so then I decided it should be done Vin Kerman well actually one of my viewers uh, was suggested it should be done Vin Kerman Who's supposed to go down there? Because it sounds pretty close to Darwin, and it would be quite interesting if we found some life down there. So I was trying to work with Scanset to see if we can find a proper landing site. The problem is Scanset had a little bit of a problem right there. It would only work in window mode or here in the IVA. So you see this entirely big flat area. If you remember, our Jade Rabbit landed there before at the very northern bases. But we still have a lot more signs to take with this craft. So I figured let's land there again and then go to the nearby slopes. Because we have two more Mystery Goo containers and we have two more Science Bay Juniors. So let's jump ahead right here. And we're already in our landing sequence. And we're just slowly going towards the very low gravity planet of Minmus. And with some careful adjustments we get all of our lateral velocity down until we reach the surface. And I think once again it will be more fun if you hear the original comments that I made. From past me. The goo looks hungry. Very hungry. Okay, let's keep that. Materials Bay. What do you have to say? The low temperature has frozen one of the liquid samples in a sort of iced cream. Was it green before? That is the question. Then let's log gravity data. The scan picks up the subtle changes in fields caused by the orbit of the moon. This data will provide valuable insight into the local system. And the seismic data. The lake beds rumble periodically. Perhaps the tidal forces are causing heating under all the ice. Alright. Log visual observations. We cannot do that on the ground. Which is pretty normal, I guess. Um, log magnetometer data. Closer study reveals that the Minmus does indeed not generate a magnetic field. Sorry for repeating myself. Log temperature. The temperature is just cold enough for a good ice cream cone. Log pressure data. The barometer displays zero in a surprisingly condescending fashion. <laughs> okay, now technically we should be able to do a crew report. Oh wait. For that, we first have to do an EVA. Take all the data. Set and then store it again, because now if we get back in, we should be able to do a new crew report. There we go! From the Great Flats, you know that the landing on a perfectly flat surface is somewhat boring. Well, I think it was not boring, I liked it. <laughs> so, the only thing left in this location is to plant a flag. And Darwin's Carmen has the first moon miss landing, and uh, Darwin Kerman came to realize there is no life on Minmus, but there is a lot of um, not except uh, there's uh, a lot of ice. Yeah, that fits. So we now just take a surface sample. It's just ice with occasional snowflakes here and there. And surface sample is you think you can drill some holes here and play some golf, space golf. Because space golf would be really fun. On a planet where the gravity is so low, you probably could never predict where the golf would fly, or you run into the problem that you might kick the ball so hard that it floats away into space, never to return again. Or return at a time you would never guess. So I said earlier I had some whoa 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 oh yeah that was some weird stuff. So I had some problem with scan sets and when I got into the craft just now 
the game crashed, which was really inconveniently and I had to restart it. So yeah, if you run into the same problem with Scanset where your big map doesn't work, just restart the game, it should fix the problem. I am running this at the development version right now, so it is a little bit buggy, but yeah. So as you can see right there, okay, we now, are at the very here's bottom our minus landing. of this crater. I had definitely aimed for this, so I am very close to these slopes. And we are going to go to we right have now slopes right here and fill up right next to it. So I think Mystery we're just going to collect the slopes. All right. So we'll just launch over there in this very very low gravity planet. And because I don't want to write things down and reread them again that I have to do in post editing, I will have my previous me read all of this to you guys. And there we go. Let's collect some more data. Crew report. Don't fall over, don't fall over, don't fall over. Yes, because we know from previous episodes that I do tend to fall over. EVA report. You wonder how far you could slide down these hills. As we have seen Jebediah do on the moon, we are not going to test this, because it will end badly. And with all the science that we have on board here, I would like this mission to succeed. And could you, like, not bounce around, Mr. Dunvin? Dunvin, Dunvin, hello. There we go. Grab a hold of yourself, man. Okay, we can do another gravity scan. The sensor is picking up a lateral gravity gradient. Oh wait, it's just you that tilts the slopes. Why did we land here again? That is a good question. Material study. The low temperature, we've read that one for. Mystery goo, observations from the slopes. The goo flops out of the container and becomes indistinguishable from the surface. Have we found the home planet of the mystery goo? A boulder rolling down the down the neighboring slope interferes with your readings. Hmm. Magnetometer scan. Closer study reveals that Minmus does indeed not generate a magnetic field. Once again, we've read this before. Now, for the last time on this mission, we will collect all the data. Let's take a surface sample. It's no... Ice, some loose dirt, and a couple of pebbles, frozen together in a strangely complicated way. And an EV report? You won? Ah, we already did that. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, and with the power of fast forwarding, we skip all of these boring collecting parts and jump ahead to where we already try to get to our drive section. We will leave this craft in orbit for maybe future or later missions when we have a spacecraft around Kerbin. Um, but we'll see in the future. So we just transferred all of the science from the lander to the drive section because that one will have all of the nice juicy juicy science on board and then bring it back to Kerbin so we get the maximum amount of science. I had so much fuel left in the lander, I could actually fill up two tanks completely and the extensive uh, fuel I had in two of the tanks that were left, I put into the drive section just to make sure that we really get back home safe and sound and we are not stranded in space. So yeah, after some normal maneuvering and with uh, maneuver notes that I felt comfortable with, you know guys how the drill works, we just get back home. And I actually had so much fuel that I actually got into a stable orbit before I made my break for the Kerbal Space Center. However, I think the post-mission commentary should be done by old me. Alright, Donvin Kerman has the first Minimus docking ribbon, awarded for being the first Kerbal docking in Minimus orbit. He has the first flag on Minimus ribbon, the first Minimus surface EVA ribbon, Minimus EVA ribbon, First Minmus Orbit EVA, First Minmus Orbit Ribbon, Dangerous EVA Ribbon, Sphere of Influence Ribbon, and launching a vehicle with a total mass of 250 tons or more, Heavy Vehicle Launcher. Arson Kerman, Splashdown Ribbon, Minmus Minmin 
Blah. A whole lot of ribbons, and they did a very, very good job. And we have collected 2,476 science with one mission. Holy macaroni. We got a little bit of money back, but that doesn't matter too much because holy, we did a lot of, a lot of science. And we're gonna spend it all, of course. So, iron propulsion, yes. Unmanned tech, yes. Large control, yes. High altitude flight, yes. Advanced aerodynamics, of course. Composites, yes. And advanced metalworks, we want that. And our last in the tier, the nuclear propulsion. Ooh, and what you see right here going off to the side is a new tech tree node, which will enable us to have heat radiators and a, few, a fission reactor. This stuff and these additional uh, tech tree nodes come from the near future technology, which comes with the entire package of the near future technologies, propulsion, electronics, and so forth and so forth. And we have a lot of more stuff coming up soon, even better photovoltaics finally. So maybe then I'll convince myself to start building a space station. But before we can build space stations, we want to probably already send out probes into space. So this is our deep space satellite. And I want to show you guys something. I tried to use interstage staging and I somehow had some problem when setting this up. So this here got disconnected when it shouldn't have, which uh, yeah, gave me a little bit of trouble. So. I don't have enough fuel in the satellite itself to put itself into a stable orbit. So after some maneuvering and some uh, post-editing, cutting it out here, um, I actually got into a position where I was able to push the satellite further into a more stable orbit. That was really, really lucky and it took a little bit of time to get this into the position that I wanted it in. And it is not optimal, you had to see me there use RCS and then for some weird reason I lost it and I was trying to get it back into position so I could push it further, but I gave up. So let's just use the engine of the satellite itself and this time I'm smart enough to use action groups. So we have this nice satellite unfolded, which should give us coverage at least to Duna and hopefully to Eve. And for the more further away planets, we will need an even bigger satellite with better satellite dishes on it. But I haven't unlocked this yet, so I'll have to go with what I have right here. And um, yeah, with the extra engine, I did get this into an orbit. It is not a perfect orbit and I did have to use RCS to get it into orbit. However, we will have to refuel this a little bit to get it into our higher orbit. And um, yeah, but I think we'll save this for the next episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Antilles.